okay guys uh, here I'm going to make a very quick video on types of DNA sequencing or gene sequencing or genome sequencing I've already discussed it using PowerPoint presentations you can find the video in my YouTube channel but uh, there are some confusions for clearing those confusions to provide your big picture I'm providing this video now usually the gene sequencing or the genome sequencing genome means uh, the total gene content of an organism right so we are having the genome we need to sequence the genome sequencing means simply we need to have or we need to get the understanding of each nucleotide segment that are present one after another so exact DNA sequences so if this is the genome we can sequence it in two different ways one is uh, the normal uh, sequencing back to back sequencing another one is the shotgun sequencing usual processes okay now remember I have told you that in, in, in any kind of this genome sequencing process what we do using genome is a very large quantity and that is the difficult most difficult part of knowing what are the nucleotide sequences knowing nucleotide sequences or uh, to get the idea of what nucleotide sequence is placed after another is can be obtained using some sequencing method like the Sanger sequencing usually uh, we uh, don't perform Sanger sequencing nowadays because we perform third generation sequencing or high throughput or pyro sequencing nowadays so these are the different types which will tell you uh, the exact orientation and arrangement of nucleotide sequences that means if you put uh, say uh, 50 uh, stretch of nucleotide sequence they are telling you what exactly nucleotide sequences are then how they are placed together using this this type of Sanger sequencing third generation uh, sequencing Illumina sequencing are there obviously pyro sequencing uh, which is also called high throughput sequencing they are there right but actually when we talk about shotgun sequencing back to back sequencing and all this type in this case what we are dealing with a large large vast range of DNA sequence now we cannot take a vast range of DNA sequence and we cannot sequence them using Sanger third generation or Pyro sequencing for the sequencing using these three categories these three processes we require small stretch of DNA now for that reason we need to chop our chromosome into small fragments because in eukaryotic system we are getting large chromosomes chromosomes long chromosomes lot of informations are there so we need to chop those chromosomes first and then we need to have small so let's say let's say this is our chromosome if, if, if we talk about so this is the chromosome which is a very bad chromosome very bad handwriting anyways now this chromosome we chop this up into smaller fragments let's say uh, so let's chop it up into smaller fragments so small fragments of DNA so we get small fragments of DNA from them and once we get small fragments ranging from say 50 base uh, kilo base pair so let me write it here let's say uh, 5 kilo base pair so say 15 kilo base pair and all these lengths are generated for example in this case so these are also very long uh, so we get this base pair's length and all those base pair length that we uh, get after uh, this fragmentation uh, then we can sequence all of them so we can again refragment them into smaller fragments or uh, very small very very small fragments again then we take the small fragments and sequence them using these three types of DNA sequencing technique and we can get the idea but the problem regarding this process is that once we get this small sequence we, we get the idea that this is AGCTT and like that and all these things like that we get the idea of the sequencing of these sequences but then what we need to do what, what creates the most problem is that this we need to align this sequence again to go back to the actual form to tell that which part of this fragment present where that is the biggest question now because we just fragmentize them then we get the small fragments because we cannot just put a chromosome and uh, let it uh, allow the Sanger sequencing and third generation sequencing to get out the sequence it is not possible so for that we chop this up but we get the sequence of them also then what we need to feed we need to we need to align them in such a way so that we get our actual chromosome structure that's how so we know all the sequence we then connect the dots we get the sequence of the whole chromosome but how we'll connect the dot that's a problem for connecting the dot we must keep track on which part of the DNA generate from which region for example in this picture let's say if we know that this is the part of this section uh, this is the part of this section this is the part of this this is the part of say this so if we know this particular information then only we can place this and we can get an idea right so one way of doing this is that first uh, during the process of sequencing we must get a physical map of those uh, of some markers some marker assisted uh, sequencing or physical mapping right so we know that these are some genetic markers let's say we find some markers we find some repeat sequences or something like that say here 
here and all these markers we find these markers now we we learn that which part of the marker present where then we uh, break this chromosome apart then we sequence all these things and by looking at the presence of those marker in a particular fragment of dna we can actually track back uh, to their actual location in the chromosome that's a way of sequencing way out uh, for connecting the dots okay and uh, there is another way out is that we simply randomly chop them up and then we realign them that means finding the overlapping regions and try to merge them with each other but that can create a problem because for overlapping region and merging if there are a lot of repeat sequences which usually present in human genome uh, will lead to the fault uh, faulty uh, result right so let me talk about that so so there are sequencing for the connecting the dot there are some variations but actual mode of sequencing or providing the data of a particular stretch of nucleotide sequence is provided by sanger sequencing illumina third generation sequencing pyro sequencing or high throughput sequencing but now this genome sequencing can be divided let me tell you say say back to back sequencing this is not this back BAC to BAC. Back means bacterial artificial chromosome. You all know that. Back to back sequencing is a type. And there is another type is shotgun sequencing. Now, in the back to back sequencing, what we are doing, we are simply taking the chromosome, we break it up, we clone it, we break it up, we again clone it usually subclone it and then we after subcloning we break it up and we look for the sequencing now when i write this sequencing means we are going for the actual sequence analysis using this type of techniques right so these are so we have a chromosome we break it up then we clone it in bacterial artificial chromosome so let me write it here we clone it in bacterial artificial chromosome then we again at, uh, we grow or uh, grow this particular uh, vector using bacterial artificial chromosome. We extract them again. So we extract them. After extraction, we again break them. Then we subclone them using again bacterial artificial chromosome. And again, we take them out, break them into very small. And now we get our desired small fragments for uh, which which can be uh, ready for the sequencing using these techniques. And what we are doing all these things because of uh, the inability of this sequencing process to sequence those large mass of sequences right if they are able to sequence large chunk of chromosomal sequence uh, we don't have to do all these things right so this is it. so we may go to that uh, day in future that we simply put the dna sequence and it will give us a sequence it will know it will i'm telling you as uh, this biology and biotechnology information is going on and and the research is going on it may be possible in near future so that's the process of back to back sequence and that's why it's called the back to back so we are having only cloning and breaking and cloning and breaking and cloning in back to uh, back vectors now let's say in shotgun sequencing the shotgun can also be divided into two different part one is hierarchical sequencing another one is uh, what you can say uh, whole genome sequencing in the hierarchical sequencing what we do this is a shotgun sequencing but before the process of this shotgun sequencing we keep track on some markers so we map our uh, gene in this case in some extent we map our gene so we map our gene that we know uh, what, what the process we have just talked about there is some some markers in the gene and we map the gene we get a physical map of that so first of all we get a physical map of that after getting physical map then we do the same thing just like this back to back sequencing we just break them and then clone them break them clone them but we first get a physical map based on some genetic markers based on some genetic markers right so that is the important part about the hierarchical shotgun but in the whole genome sequencing it is random completely so we are having total chromosome so let me write we are having the total chromosome we break it then break it and finally we sequence it after getting the sequence we are going back in the previous phase using what we can say overlapping segment or following overlapping region now human genome sequencing or human genome project 
So let me write human genome project or HGP. This project is done using the shotgun sequencing, especially the whole genome shotgun method. Though this method is uh, uh, very easy to do, but going backward is very difficult because it sometimes gives us wrong definitions, sometimes gives us wrong sequences, sometimes there are a lot of repeats. So merging those repeats could be a problem. So these are some. This is the basic overview of two type of genome sequencing that we usually carry out. Right. So that's it. And I hope that's helpful. Thank you.